We're yeah, older than last time you saw us. No, you're not. Things are bad in here. The great news is, is that the day is coming to an end. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so this is the most hilarious film. Sure. I giggled all the way through it. Um, how on earth do you stop yourself laughing when you've got the giggles? We don't. We just laughed our way through and, and blue takes constantly and, you know. Um, you just keep laughing until the grip stares at you like, uh, like, like I want to get home, man. I want to go, go home. Can you stop now? So, yeah, yeah. it's at that point you stop laughing. Yeah, when you realize it's funny frightening. to you, but it's not funny to them. Mm. Not after like eight takes. But yeah, that is true. Um, pretty action packed. You're falling out windows, cars. I mean, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all going on. Um, were there any injuries? Yeah, a few. Yeah, but then, you know, you're getting paid a lot to get some bruises. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. So you always get beat up on movies. You know? You're so tough. You can handle it. I'm just so overpaid, really. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and bored. <laughs> you two are the best partners in crime. What do you look for in an accomplice? Oh, well, 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 you know. Um... <laughs> you can't say it. I don't know. No, you can't say that. I, um. Whatever's going through your head right now, don't say it out loud. I have a strong feeling. <laughs> that I can't that? really answer this. <laughs> Come on. No. Come on, top three things you look for in an encompass. Three things? We couldn't get one a minute ago. <laughs> now we have three. This is going to be impossible. Yeah, there's nothing clean. There's nothing clean. No. Everything's solid. Swiftly on to adventures. You go from one adventure to another adventure. What's the last adventure you've been on recently? Hmm. Crash. God, we're really boring. We said we have nothing to say. We went through the desert without any shoes. Oh yeah, no, I went to Dubai. I went to Dubai with my son, and we 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 went uh, we went we went on, we were in the desert, and we were on a camel, and then by the afternoon we were skiing because uh, they have an indoor um, uh, ski mountain in the middle of the desert because it's Dubai and they do really mad things, and you really you really realise the world is in deep deep. Deep trouble. Deep yeah. caca. It's in deep caca because it takes a lot of energy to keep that mountain cold, that snow cold. That's true. Show. I'll tell you, my most uh, recent adventure that that um, I've had, I went to a 7-Eleven for the first time in about 25 years. I know this. I did, and. I can't tell you how great it felt. What did you buy? Everything. No, you know, I mean, you, you gotta get donuts there, you gotta get a Slurpee there, you know, you gotta get, you know, trash, food. Did yeah. you do that with Doug Stanhope? No, that was uh, Doug Stanhope, who was this fantastic comedian, a genius. Uh, we went to Target together with my daughter to buy a school, <laughs> a school supplies. <clears throat> no, who, who, who well, yeah, who was there? Yeah, but, there was someone there. I don't know. And lastly, how did he celebrate the end of this film? Can't tell you. On rap. I took the mustache off, that's what I did. <laughs> Burnt the mustache. Yeah, had a mustache burning party. No, um, um, at the end of the film, you know, it's always, it's always somewhat sad, you know, at the end of a, a film, because you've spent a good amount of time with uh, people, you know. Like a family. Yeah, it is. It's like a traveling circus, really. Well, it was so nice to chat to you twice today, and yeah. I'm gonna break all the rules. But Very just much. because. Okay. We'll do, uh, Are we ready, guys? Here we go. How satisfying it is as an actor to, to take on something that's pretty different from yourselves, vocally, physically, and what kind of helped you find them, their movement, and, and, their, and their voices. Well, I based mine on, well, from firstly the book, um, and then Johnny's two security guards, Jerry and Malcolm, <laughs> and uh, a, a, a growl that I started doing, like a, do like a dog. Yeah, a the, gr a dog. <laughs> the growl uh, in the beginning was slightly off-putting because here was this friend that I you know, knew very, very well, and uh, he was kind of growling, uh, 
not your involuntary growling, you know. I was worried about him. And Charlie makes a, a few involuntary kind of kind of noises, didn't he? I love those. Oh yes, yeah, his, 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 his frustration, you know, his his rage, his sort of thing. And you spend quite a bit of time in the UK. What do you enjoy about sort of researching for and then and taking on an English accent for for roles? I, you know, it's, it, it, it it feels natural to me. It feels very natural um, to me. Uh, British uh, British accents. Um, you spent so much time here. Exactly. I spent I spent a lot of time over here. You know, and. Uh, um, it's also just—I mean—the cult, the culture is fascinating. The, the endless uh, hi history of this place, you know. Um, yeah. Plus, Christopher Hitchens was born here, wasn't he? Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> and um, we love you um, in the Fast Show, of course. And then, oh, thanks, man. God, life oh. is short. A, a bit more. Um, oh yeah. Life is too short, rather. A bit more recently. Who, who are your comic um, heroes in, in in Britain? And of course, there's Paul Whitehouse in, in the movie. Well, well, Paul, Paul Whitehouse. Uh, is one is one of my heroes. You you probably say the same. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, I, I thought Paul and Charlie Higgs and I, I were great. I, every one of the fast show, I thought they were the best actors I've, I'd ever seen. Um, so yeah, Paul I would say is up there. Um, Alec Guinness um, is up there. Uh, geez, Peter O'Toole. Um, Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan. It's, it's, it, you know what it is, is these people, uh, these artists recognize timing and the importance of timing. I mean, really the importance of timing, you know, comedic timing. It's that one beat extra. And if the director cuts off half of that little millisecond, screw the whole joke, you know. And those guys understood that. Johnny Depp, Paul Bettany, thanks very much. Telling me his mum called this film Murgatroyd. What's the worst, <laughs> what's the worst way you've heard this name of this film butchered? <laughs> I think Johnny, Johnny P, you know, he, he did a pretty good job. Butchering the butcher. name Mordecai. Yeah. Mordecai, 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 Mordecai. I mean, it was, it was very funny. Mordecai. I mean, they should have put it on the poster, Frank. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Phonetic. Yeah. Uh, there's something in the trailer which I love, which is when you, Johnny, pull what we call in the office the Mordecai face. You said, I don't need uh, any help with my luggage. Oh. I have a manservant. Then you pull a face that I'm going to try here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. What's the trick? I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's that that particular area to travel to is not all that difficult only in the sense that yeah it's pretty easy to be confused by someone's yeah weirdness how did it feel on the seventh time and the seventh take carrying johnny up that escalator he did get heavier throughout the takes actually Isn't that weird? Um, uh, yeah yes yeah, so that was difficult but it's very sweet because um he says uppy uppy uh, in it, which is um, something that my daughter says to him when when they're together. She, it's, Agnes it, says it, we would say to Johnny, "Happy, happy." So happy, that's happy. where it came from. Mm. <laughs> now I know. Happy, happy, Joe. Happy, happy. <laughs> now, David Kep has also described you, Johnny, as essentially being one of those Google self-driving cars, and his his phrase was, "It knows exactly where to go." I trust him on that. You trust him. Did you find that yourself? You just watched him do his thing? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, he would come on. But, no, you know, we, that, 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 we, go on. There's no yeah. thing without yeah. him. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, is that? Um, <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, God. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, but, no, but D David Kep is being um, uh, very modest there. Sure. He's a really, he, he would come up with some great, uh, direction, one of which was mm -hmm. when Johnny was on the bonnet of the <laughs> car and it wasn't quite what he wanted, he didn't quite know how to give the direction and then he suddenly had a eureka moment and he said... <laughs> he said, you ever see a dog trying to get out of a pool? <laughs> <laughs> and the image immediately hit me, you know. Of course.
That's perfect. And it's, uh, that's, that's one of the best pieces of direction I've ever got in my life. Good to see you guys. Very, see. very funny film. And this kind of reminded me about many years ago, the first time I ever saw Peter Sellers' film. I could not stop laughing. It was like just that. the best kind of thing. Is that what resonated with you guys? Most definitely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the opportunity to do that type of um, buddy picture, if you will, you know what I mean? Like, uh, a very um, bizarre uh, relationship, <laughs> you know. I you wanted know, to so. know, because you two are a great comedic duo. I mean, very, well, very good very together. Much. Thinking how of hard? taking it on the road. <laughs> well, that was, that was my next question, but how hard was it not to crack each other up? Oh, it was impossible. We did, and 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 the director, uh, you know, we had to actually move the director <laughs> further and further down the hallway because he kept running takes by laughing. Yeah. And I once made Johnny laugh so much that my crowning glory was I made him laugh so much that his moustache flew across the room. It shot off my face about four feet because I burst into laughter. And the glue just the wasn't couch. holding. On the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I would think the selling point for you, Paul, is to, you see a character named Jockstrap. I'm in. Yeah, I'm absolutely <laughs> in. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, I, uh, Johnny gave me the books because we were making a movie together called Transcendence that had nary a joke in it. That one. And so uh, he, um, he, he sent me them to cheer me up, and um, they're <laughs> really delicious. I recommend anybody, you know, to get them. They're so naughty. It's a guilty pleasure. Uh, you feel author. drunk after you've read them, actually, even if you're not drinking it. He's one of the only authors you know, out of a, maybe a handful that may, have made me laugh out loud when I've read the books. So Kirill Bonfiglioli, who, who unfortunately didn't even finish the last book. No. His friend had to uh, finish it because he passed away, which is not a joke and not funny. However, he's still not here. He's not doing press. No, he's not. Okay, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay what triggers your gag reflex? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I, I don't know, I'm a, you know, certain odors could do it, uh, a noise or two. Journalists? My fingers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, journalists don't, I don't know. Some of my favorite humans. Well, I, I've got a very strong gag reflex. You know, I, I mean, strong gag reflex? It's very strong, I don't, I don't really gag. No, it's, it's that strong. Yes, it's strong in that way. It's good to know. <laughs> Congratulations. This is like um, so funny. I love oh. the silliness of it, and I loved you all in that, like you and Gwyneth and Ewan, and I got the feeling that making it was probably as much fun as it was to watch. Yeah, we, ha we, 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 we didn't stop laughing. I mean, to be frank, usually when a film comes to an end, even though you're sort of pretending to shake people's hands, oh, I'm going to miss you so much. You're thinking, oh, I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to get home. But um, this was really sad to, to, to let go of at the end. We, we, we really did laugh a lot. Was there lots of outtakes? I can just imagine with the tash and the, the funny eye and the accents. I, th I think that there was probably more uh, goofs and outtakes than there is Using minutes in his head. It's probably triple whatever the movie is. I mean, it, it, it was constant. Jock is my manservant and handles all of our most pressing affairs. Well done, Jock. You guys are, are good friends and you've worked together before. Yeah. Um, Paul, did you ever imagine that you would be Johnny's manservant called <laughs> Strap? <laughs> I had dreamt of it for well, years. Johnny has needed a jock strap for years. <laughs> and I, uh, Paul Bettany is my I leapt strap. into the breach, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Charlie Mordecai has this even a, a new way of mumbling. He's got his own special way of talking, which I imagine you quite enjoyed getting into, Johnny. Oh yeah, no, it was really fun. It was really fun finding uh, finding him, I guess. You know, finding the voice. And oddly enough, you know, because the book in the in the books he, he there's a he's a very d different sort of uh, look. You know, in the book, he, I think they suggested, uh, Bonfiglioli suggested he had curly black hair. And all that. But, um, so f I, I think the first time that I saw him was, you know, 
the first day of shooting, really, because um, combed the hair back, put the mustache on. And there he was. The part in the, between the teeth, and then just there he was. But you've got a tash, but you didn't grow one for this film. You no, I couldn't. I on. couldn't grow one like that. No. In a million years. There's lots of talk of uh, vintage wines and whiskies, etc. I just mm. wondered if you insisted on it being the real thing, or whether it was a uh, flavored water. I mean, me, I always beg the prop man to to hook me up, but they don't. Never. Never. I thought you get to this day over stuff like that. Those days are gone. And the oh. oh. You hook yourself up. <laughs> to oxygen, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul, you said your kids call uh, Johnny Uncle Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Because he has an island. <laughs> 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 no, he's. You know, I mean, it, it, it is. I was. I was thinking about it earlier. Somebody was asking me, and it's. It, he he comes around, and it is like having. Uh, some hobo magician from the 1930s turn up at your house who just sort of, and it, you know the kids, uh, the kids love him because he falls over a lot. <laughs> I think because they can just push me over. <laughs> Keel sideways. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever been to Houston? Any of you two? I haven't. I have. And yeah. did you have a good time? I did, from what I remember. <laughs> no, no, I did have a good time in Houston. Um, I have been all around Texas. I, I, I'm sort of fascinated by the the state of Texas. Very it, cool. It's just got so it, so many different sort of elements. It's like kind of Australia attached to the U.S. You guys have worked together before, but I love the chemistry in this film. I mean, you guys just obviously make the movie, and your characters are just so dynamic. Any Thanks. stories that we didn't see off the screen? Yes, but they're unrepeatable. So many. <laughs> I was pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I was actually expecting. Tell them that one. Oh, I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> okay, we're done. Uh, <laughs> you guys actually, you filmed it so many places. Uh, you know, obviously here in London mm -hmm. and Los Angeles. Where would you your favorite place to shoot, Mordecai? Oh, it's got to be London, right? I'd say it was just. I mean, yeah, because that's where they hail from, and I think there's more of a there's more opportunity. Right. Somehow. Uh, but the stuff yeah. at the Standard Hotel in LA was very That funny. was pretty fun. Where are you? I would tell you, Vogue, a place called Los Angeles. I am Mordecai. Do you need help with your bags? No, I do not need help with my bags. I have a bloody manservant. The mustache, obviously, in Mordecai. Yeah. I, I have one in my pocket. Uh, you've inspired <laughs> me to wear it everywhere now. <laughs> but did you name it? It's almost its own character in this film. You know what? I, I didn't respect it enough to give it a name, so I'd kind of, I'd sort of treat it. I'd be a little rough with the mustache to kind of call it names, you know, fuzzy thing, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Charlie Mordecai, life tips, what would he say? The second you wake up in the morning, first thing you should do is have a cocktail. Your characters almost have a bromance going on in this movie. Tell us something about their relationship. It's a very special relationship. Um, uh, you know, uh, he I, treats him really badly, shoots me, runs me over, mm. but I still love him. And would yeah. do anything for him. Oh, I believe I've just shot John. Excellent shot, sir! Man down! And we rehearse those things quite a lot. A lot of the things that happened to me in the movie, Johnny came up with. Um, and I think he just like, he asked me to play the role just so he could keep putting me in jeopardy <laughs> and laughing at me, wrestling a Doberman Pinscher or, or, oh, or I'm setting fire. Let's set fire to Paul today. <laughs> it will set fire to It was on fire. Yeah, it was on fire. Wow. But you're healthy now. Everything is fine, right? Everything's good. Thank good. you very much for your concern. <laughs> The movie has an obsession with mustaches, especially your character. Um, I brought some for you. Oh. And I would love to know which one you would pick for your friend. So, Paul, if you could pick one for Johnny, Johnny, you, for Paul, please. Oh, this what, is what really difficult, but I, 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 I'd personally like to see you as a bandit. I'm not saying Ooh. what sort of bandit, but you've already got a bandit on. Yours is back. This is your moustache. That oh, you you're right. I have your moustache. <laughs> I can't. It's really hard to thing. take it off, right? 
I can't get the damn thing open. Can you can imagine it. Okay. Well, it will fit to you too, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is marvellous. Thank you for this. Were you jealous that you didn't get to wear a mustache? Absolutely and... not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, having just experienced that one. Um, oh my god. Wait, no, it's impossible. Yeah. Give up. Give up. <laughs> Which yeah. one would you Give pick? Show it's like stuff. algebra. Nobody can do it. This is supposed to be his. Oh, what's the name of is that it one? Or what's that one called? The Schlaumeier. Oh, it means like clever boy. You, you got the clever boy then. There you go. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> so, um, we are very excited to see you in um, Pirates of the Caribbean and in Avengers. <laughs> what um, could you imagine, Johnny, could you imagine it's Paul as Avengers. a pirate? And Paul, you're could you imagine Johnny no, as a yeah, superhero? No. Uh, could I imagine Johnny as a superhero? Uh, no. No, I, but then I can't really imagine myself as a superhero. So, um, but somehow it happened. Um, but I can't. I can't. I, I still unbelievably can't talk about the Avengers. And every time I do, I see like a red dot appear on my chest, or I see sunlight glinting off a telescopic lens. And so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy on that one. I'm afraid. How about you, Tony? Could you see him as a pirate? Would you like to see him? Oh. Was that a yes? No. He yes. He no. Smiled. Yes. I would. Uh, did I? Yeah, he <laughs> Um, I think he'd make a great pirate. He'd be great anything. I could be like your simple brother that turns up. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Go to Australia with me. Simpleton brother. Take your nose blue. I want, I want to steer the ship. I want to steer. <laughs> Please be that guy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being Doc, can you describe uh, your boss? He's a well-meaning idiot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Always gets us into terrible scrapes uh, that I have to then get him out of. But I'd die for him. You would die for him. That is very good. I've heard there's something, a rumor going around. It's called open your balls. What is it? I can't discuss it. I can't discuss the opening of balls. Secret code. A secret code. It's a secret code. It's a pact between Johnny I and the director. We will never disclose. There's uh, Joanna. How would you describe her? I would choose a very special, very very, very special, and be be afraid of her. You're afraid of her. Yeah, no, I'm scared. Is it true that she doesn't like mm. this? Yeah. She's not keen. Um, why? I think it's. Mustache envy. That's what I think. I don't want to because say. she can't. She can wear one. She only, she gets like three or. She has about seventeen hairs. Yeah. On her, you know, in that area. Yeah. But that is not going to constitute. That doesn't make a mustache. Yeah. No. So I do my best. But she's so insecure. She's got. A... For the last information, do you have a favorite ice cream? Ice cream favorite. Flavor ice cream? Yes, I quite like vanilla. Vanilla, salted, mm. salted, salted, salted. Peanut butter, chocolate, vanilla, salted, <laughs> salt. salted, salt, salted, salt ice cream. Salted salt ice cream. That is my favorite too. That is weird, actually. That is weird. <laughs> about this film, uh, Johnny, you have this talent of imagining characters in your mind purely, infused sometimes by other characters. So was it the case in this one? Were you always meant to play an eccentric aristocrat? Uh, it always seemed like something like that would be on the way, you know, because it's a part that I have never played, especially within the context of this, you know, kind of sophisticated romp. You know, much like the the uh, Peter Sellers uh, uh, Pink Panther movies. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I what was the original question again? No, it's if if you you were always meant to play the eccentric aristocrat, ah, how yes. do you imagine them in your head? Right, right, right. Um, what Getting I, them out of your head is the that's the problem. That's the they, trick. They, they never leave. <laughs> But but Char- I mean Charlie's was, 
I mean, his his objective was pretty simple, you know. It just required a lot of complications to get there. Um, I had a I had a gas. I mean, yeah, me too. There, everything was just p perfect. It was so much fun. You know, you guys have been together in two films before that, but this was a real bonding experience, wasn't it? Yeah, we um we were talking about this earlier that on the last the the previous two movies that we had been in together we uh, uh, you know all all of the jokes and mayhem happened off camera and uh, yes. it was it was lovely to sort of let all of that dangle on screen as it were you know yeah. it, was, it was a lot of we had, it was so much fun and our director finish. was ruining takes by laughing, the crew were ruining takes by laughing, mm -hmm. it was just, it was, you know, usually it's such a relief to go home, <laughs> and it was, it was actually, it was, it was, it was kind of sad at night, we used to hang around in the trailer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wanted longer days. I'll just stop by the set and see if there's anything they need me to do, mm -hmm, right. so I can always go back in and make up, it's only two and a half hours. <laughs> It's fine. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Are we talking about mustache obsession? David just told me all those stories about emailing pictures of various mustaches. That was one of the very, one of the very strangest uh, experiences I've ever had. Two grown men in a, you know, in a, in in a, uh, contact with one another, sending like digital photographs of mustaches and things like that. I found it kind of gross. <laughs> I found it kind of gross. But you found the perfect one, so I guess the research Yeah, because none of those things are... You know, the Franz Joseph is like really one of these guys. And uh, I just... I, th I think it might have been too subtle. <laughs> so we went with a smaller one. It says... You know, it says something without saying anything. <laughs> it says yes without saying no. Real statement. I love it. Right? <laughs> Charlie Mord Charlie Mordecai's mustache says yes without saying no. Je suis Charlie. Je suis Charlie. Je suis Charlie Mordecai. <laughs> Lui aussi, le Charlie. Oui. On est tous Charlie. Oui. Uh, right. So, manservant as a description for a character, that must have been something laughable from the beginning. Well, it's, <clears throat> I, I mean, Johnny gave me the books. I read the books. He's a Jock is a great character, and and from a sort of rich history of clever servant, stupid master, master getting himself into trouble, servant getting him out of trouble. Mm. It's delicious stuff to play with, and I, I, you know he he as as irritating as he finds um, Charlie's um, uh, coward cowardliness and and. Um, and ineptness at times, he loves him and would lay down his life for him. And that's his station in life, you know, and he's very happy with it. And you, the, 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 that's what you get from the books. It's a real, mm. it's, a, it's actually a real loving relationship. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There are others. Uh, the fans had two questions for you. The first one was, if you were to play someone's biography, who would you choose? <laughs> Oh, boy. I, well, you uh, just did. Sort of. Yeah. Um, Carol Channing, I thought of for a while. And I still think she's lovely, but... Uh, Peebo Bryson. I'll tell you what, you know who might be fun? Who is that grim fucker up in Northern Ireland? Big giant guy. Ian Paisley. He dead. Ian Paisley? Yeah. I want to dress up like him. <laughs> No, I don't want to just say that. What should I do? <laughs> uh, a question about Peter Sellers. You know, we spoke about those films and the tone of those movies. Uh, are they the films that most, in the comedies that you most watched, both of you, uh, before becoming actors? What was the, you know, main source of inspiration for movies like this one? Oh, oh I grew up watching those movies, you know. I grew up watching movies in my house, I didn't go out much. So, you know, <laughs> I was endlessly, uh, you know, watching all of those old Ealing comedies and, and, and uh, we had a black and white television 
and I thought every film was black and white. And, to, and I, would kick, yeah. I, was, I sometimes see movies that I go, oh, that film was in colour. You know what I mean? Because I, I remember it so well as a black and white film. But um, all of those, you know, Alec Guinness um, films and, and Peter Sellers films were what I grew up with, and peculiarly enough, what you grew up with, mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in America, which is very, makes you very strange. <laughs> no, that was huge there. Was it? Uh, yeah, the Pink Panther was enormous, still is. Uh, and I love, well, you know, any any actor with with uh, uh, any semblance of uh, uh, thought in his head has to love him, has to, yeah. you know, has to worship Sully. Because it's like the guy, the guys that I watched as a kid, for some reason, like this public broadcasting uh, station, PBS was showing, um, they were showing a bunch of Charlie Chaplin films for like a week. And I watched him as a kid and just fell in love with the guy. And then I looked around a little more and I found Buster Keaton. And I thought they were geniuses, you know, and they were. Um, but it, it wasn't like I had any particular need for it at the time. And I still don't know why I was so interested. But those guys were heavily influenced, uh, a heavy influence on me. Uh, Lon Chaney Sr., heavy influence. Um, I, I think, and I think, again, I think what I love best about that is it's just emotion. It's just what you can produce through your eyes, through your body language, you know? so. That that doesn't you know that doesn't come for free. I mean, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's a it's a kind of a strange part of the process. I guess. Every time I talk to Paul, I ask the same thing, and I'm going to ask it again today. I apologize for not including you in this question. Don't worry, I ask the same thing you're going to ask. Um, what do I need to do, and what do fans need to do to get another Master and Commander? Because uh, I really still need that movie. Uh, raise a couple of million, a hundred million dollars. Okay. okay. So, so, so Kickstarters... That's just for Russell. <laughs> <laughs> that's just for Russell. That might be true, but um, <laughs> moving into why I get to talk to you guys today, uh, one of the things that's really cool about this is that it has a lot of witty banter, and it's like it reminded me of like an old school Hollywood movie in terms of the dialogue and the characters. W talk a little bit about is that what appealed to you? Could you or just talk about the witty banter? Well, it was. I mean, it's it, it, it was expertly written. You know, I mean, coming off the book and then bringing that into a screenplay and then. Getting that on film is is uh, quite a task in itself. That was a ten year endeavor for you. It was, yeah. And then when we get in there with David Cap, who's the perfect director for this, and uh, you know Paul, um, it turned into it's just sort of got its own <laughs> own life in a weird way. Don't you think? I do, yeah. Because David started to do that snappy dialogue stuff. Yeah, and he, yeah. And he could actually, you know, he's a great writer and he could rewrite if we, we he would come up with ideas the whole time. And, mm. and that's a, usually a very dangerous thing, but he, he thinks so clearly and quickly. And it was, we, 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 we laughed so much making this movie. And, and the director laughed so much that we had to actually move him out and down the hall because oh, yeah, he was he's, ruining he's Chuck his mind. My next question was going to be who ruined the most takes from laughing? Both of the us. director. Oh, yeah, the director, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, my crowning glory, because uh, I'm not, I'm, uh, Johnny's much better at keeping a straight face. My crowning glory was making him laugh so hard that his moustache lapped across the room. I was hoping it was going to land on Gwyneth Paltrow's top lip. It actually you know? did about a four or five foot, <clears throat> you know, vault off of my face. It was a burst of hysterical laughter and the thing just went. Um, that is completely awesome. Isn't it cool? I, my, my, one of my uh, the finest moments was, was when we were doing Gwyneth's close-up. And, you know, she got the giggles, I got the giggles, you know. And then she just looked at me crying, laughing, and she said, please stop being funny. <laughs> <laughs> that made me happy. Uh, before I run out of time with the two of you, I have to ask, uh, I'm so excited for Black Mass and this Keith Richards documentary. Yeah. If one of you could talk about both 
and I'm incredibly excited to see Vision come to life mm -hmm. in Avengers. Mm -hmm. Could you guys talk about that stuff? Um, what am I talking about? Keith Richards' documentary is oh, yeah. amazing. I've oh, yeah, seen it. It's extraordinary. He's seen he's seen a rough cut. Yeah. Um, the key the key thing is 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 something so important. That's why I've really taken my time with it to make sure that it's it's a perfect document or as perfect as it can be. Um, and then, so I'm, something I'm really excited about, you know. Uh, and Black Mass was, uh, yeah, it was it, it was a it was a real challenge, you know, to to make all that uh, work. And you know, when you're bringing essentially bringing James Bolger back to his old neighborhood where <laughs> he's looked upon slightly unpleasantly. Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> Meeting some of the people that he met. Can't wait. Yeah, I was, Scott Cooper killed it. I mean, the guy. It's his third film, and the guy's like a a master. You know. What about you? Um. Yeah, I'll tell. Uh, I'll tell you the ending. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Red dot end. appears on me whenever I start to talk about Marvel films. Um. Um, what can I tell? I can tell you that I've kept it secret for about three years. I've known that this was going to happen, and um, I'm not about to give the game away right now because we've managed to keep it really under wraps. There's only a few images out, you know, and uh, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty grand. Totally, I got to go. Thank you both Thanks, so much. Man. Thank you.